Well, as we continue our series of two or three videos on how to add more M.2 or NVMEs to your system if you do not have any more ports available, we're gonna continue on with this guy, and this is by Asus. This is the Rogue um, Hyper M.2 card, and I wanna talk a little bit about this and install this and get this thing tested out, and uh, there is a bio setting we need to change in this, so don't go anywhere. So in my last video, you saw me add and show you exactly how to add the Sabrent single NVMe PCI Express card into the uh, PCI Express slot right below the graphics card. And what that did that we found out is it went from uh, by 16 slot up here to now by eight. And this was a by um, also by eight by default because we're adding in that particular card. Now going to this Hyper M.2, we have the capability of adding two NVMEs. So, but there is something we need to do. So in the last video, we could see that the bottom card was a by eight. Now we need to get this because each of these drives, these NVMEs, are by four cards. But if it only supports eight, that means it's only gonna see one of the two cards. It's not gonna see both. So what we need to do is we need to go into the BIOS and change the setting in this, and it's called bifurcation. Bifurcation just means taking one and splitting into two, very in simplest terms. So we need by four by four instead of one large by eight. So it will run two drives and not just one. So. We need to restart this computer, get into the BIOS, and then I'm going to show you. Now this particular one is an ASUS BIOS, and this motherboard supports bifurcation. If your motherboard does not support bifurcation, you cannot add a card like this and expect it to see both drives. If you add a card like this without bifurcation, you're only gonna see one drive, just as a warning. So let me get the monitor back up here. We're going to restart this and I'm going to show you how to change this in the BIOS. All right, before we go into the BIOS, let's get our drives in our card. Now, this HyperAmp.2 card can actually support a Gen 5 speed NVMe, which I do not have, and nor can this motherboard support it anyway. But the other one can support a Gen 4. So both of them can support Gen 3, 4, and just the one can support a five. So we're gonna put a gen four in and a gen three because right now I don't have another gen four. I have one gen, th I have uh, many gen threes, but I only have one gen four as a spare. Otherwise they're in my PCs right now. So uh, let's get this card apart. All right, so what we do with this one is we turn it over and we got four screws on the back here and we're just going to take these off. I believe these, nope, they're not captive. Okay, I thought they were. That's okay. It's always nice to see captive screws. And now you can officially turn this over and take that right off. You'll see on here, you have to remove these, uh, they got little peel tape things on here. So we have to remove these. So you don't want those heating up and melting to your, your new drives that you're installing probably. So take those off first hand. All right, now this one over here was our Gen 5. So what we're gonna do is put our Gen 4 over there and I do have to get the screws to this. 
So I have to go get those. I'm going to put our Gen 3 over here. I'm going to go get the screws. So I had one quick connect ASUS connector that I put in here. And this should, I should be able to put this down. Uh, just like that. And go like that. So that'll hold that one in, but I don't have two of them. Well, I did have a second one. I did have a second one. All right, as we can see, both of our drives are now installed. I have my Gen 4 here and, excuse me, Gen 3. And what we're going to do here is put this back on. And these pretty much go until they're bottomed out. Okay. All right, so you can see our drives in there. Uh, it might be kind of hard to see them, but they're in there. All right, very cool. So this does, I am gonna say this. Look at this bow. See that bow in it right there? I don't think I should loosen these. I thought that that would have uh, been a little bit better than that, but I believe that those should be tight like that. So I really don't wanna back them off because they can they can just loosen right up, so that doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm going to leave that bow in there, although I don't like that. So, all right, so the computer is off. We are going to put this in here so it'll recognize it in the BIOS. Flip it over. I know the pretty side is going to be down. Go right to your, uh, let me turn off the power supply. There we go. And we're going to put this right in. I say we're going to put it in. Oh, let's not do that. There we go. We're going to put our screw in here for the support of it. Even though it's not going to go anywhere. Um, as you can see down here, right here, this is the card with the two drives in it. And I it took a little digging because I wasn't exactly... Um, right up front here, but if you follow this path, advanced onboard device configuration, and you scroll down here to where it says, uh, let's see, the configuration mode, the CPU PCI configuration mode, and I believe what we want is not the Hyper M.2.16, because that would be, that would put it I believe in, I think what we want is these M.2. I think this is what we want. We are going to try it. If not, we're going to go to the Hyper one and try that. So we are going to save changes and reset. And yes. All right, guys. So let's check out, see if it sees three drives instead of just my one or just the two. It sees only one. Okay, so we have a little bit of work to do. We have to see if we can go back in there and figure out what the heck is going on. So let's reboot into, well, actually, you know what? That might be an uninitialized drive. Let me, let me go ahead and check it out here. Okay, it's not. It is not seeing it. Okay. All right. Well, we confirm that. 
Let's do a reboot. All right, guys, I think I finally got this thing figured out. It took a little while. Um, and uh, so right here, we have Hyper M.2 uh, by 16. So it needs to be in that orientation or that, that option, I should say. And then what you want to do is come up here and exit and save, which I've already tried this out. I was having some difficulty and uh, not sure what was going on there. So we're going to let this thing boot up into Windows and we should see the other drive. All right, guys, we're in Windows here, so let's take a look. See, now here, it should still see the single drive, which it does. It's a new volume. There's nothing on it. Let's do a right click here, come up to disk management. And look at that. We have a second one. So it should have prompted us to, oh, that's right. I forgot, I gotta go down here. <laughs> All right, new simple volume. Next, 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 and finish. All right, so now we go out of here. Look at that. We have three drives now. That's all with that Hyper M.2 card. So there's a couple questions out there. So now what does our graphics card look like? Let's uh, start up CPU-Z. I wish I had GPU-Z on here. That's okay. We just want to get the overall. All right, let's go to motherboard. And right down here, it says current uh, link width or bandwidth is by eight. It's capable of 16, but we have it in a configuration for, um, for uh, eight now. So our graphics card is going to run a little, potentially a little slower. All right, let's try the crystal disk mark. I'm expecting the D drive to run close to uh, 7,000, 6,500 to 7,000. So we're on the D. Let's just do the sequential reads and sequential writes. And we should be seeing about 65 to 7,000 on the reads and about 5,000 on the writes. Now, if you remember this test from yesterday, we were hitting about 6,500. Now with this Hyper M.2 card, we're hitting 6,800. So that's 300 megabytes faster with this card. Let's see if the writes are any better. No, nope, not really. Okay. So we'll let this finish up and then we'll check the E drive. Okay. Now let's check the E drive. Same test. Oh yeah, maxing out on there. That's excellent. All right, now we're just waiting on the writes to populate here. It should be any moment now. There we go. That is actually really, really good. I am impressed and it looks great. So guys, that's it. It was that simple. But I do want to make a note here of something that I corrected. So in the beginning when I put those M.2s in, you remember when I put the cover on and it had that bow? Well, I found out, I took it back off, and I found out that the M.2s if you had a level plane, they were actually raised too high. So what I did is I took those off, put the regular standoffs with the screws that lowered it so it was even across. And then there was, when I put the top plate on the heat sink, there was no bow anymore. So uh, that in itself 
could have been an issue. So especially uh, in the future, you could have had a, uh, you know, heating up and cooling down those SSDs, the M.2s could have uh, been damaged. Um, uh, so I corrected that, put it back in, set the thing to uh, uh, the Hyper M.2 by 16 in the second slot, but also don't forget that this now runs at an eight speed instead of a 16 speed. So if you're doing any kind of heavy, heavy gaming or video editing, video or photo editing or something like that, something that needs a lot of graphics, then this is probably not the way to go for you. You probably just wanna stick with something ex external or whatever you have on the motherboard or maybe even a SATA SSD if you don't want to split that bandwidth or cut that bandwidth in half. So, oh, look at that, left the screw in there. Bad me, that was bad. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Comment down below as always. Also, uh, consider subscribing if you have not and hit that little bell icon after you subscribe to get notified for any future videos that I post. Also, why don't you do me a favor and just hit that thumbs up button to uh, show a little support and uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. And keep smiling. And until next time, take care.